Thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Um, we've had rain, now we've had a lot of heat, but we continue to get a great crowd out here and I really appreciate that and thank you for coming out. We're excited about this. Uh, this is the third of four community engagement meetings uh, that we're having with um, uh, reimagining Long Reach Village Center. I'm Mark Thompson, I'm with the Howard County Economic Development Authority and I'm leading this project with uh, a great support from a number of my county colleagues who are here tonight. Um, I would like to, to welcome you all again, thank you for coming. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, County Executive Kittleman is uh, detained tonight at a Maryland Association of Counties meeting, so he won't be able to be here, but he wanted to uh, express and send his greetings to you all. Thank you so much for taking part in tonight's meeting on the future of the Long Ridge Village Center. This is our third meeting, and I know most of you also attended the first two. I truly appreciate your enthusiasm for this effort. We've learned a lot during the first two meetings, and hopefully you now have a better understanding of the market dynamics of the Village Center. We've heard a lot about potential opportunities from a physical perspective. At the last meeting, you heard a terrific presentation from Jeff Glazier of Kimco, who discussed the redevelopment of the Wild Lake Village Center, another center in Columbia that faced similar issues. You also heard from Duncan Webb, who presented a thorough assessment of the need for arts facilities in Howard County and specific thoughts for Longreach. Tonight, you'll be hearing about and discussing four different conceptual plans as we continue to reimagine Longreach. Let me offer special thanks to Karen Hitcho and the entire Longreach Village Board for your partnership in this effort. I believe that through this process of actively engaging the community, we will develop a final plan that is not only achievable, but will provide a major repositioning for the Village Center and surrounding neighborhoods. Thank you for your assistance tonight, and I hope to see you all back here again for our next meeting on September 17th. I'd also like to uh, recognize um, some additional special, special guests that we have here uh, tonight. We have State Delegate from District 12, Eric Ebersol, Delegate in, standing in the back there. Uh, Kim Prime from Councilman Calvin Ball's office. Milton Matthew, the CEO of the Columbia Association is here with us tonight as well. And, I, and I'd also like to thank and recognize one of Howard County's finest, Officer Jared Deans in the back. He's our community resource officer based here. Can I ask a first uh, a, a question, because usually I'm answering the questions. How many of you all have, have, were at the first meeting that we had? Show of hands. Wow, that's great. How about the second meeting? That's great too. So I'm going to review some things, because I didn't see everybody raising their hand at least once. So for those of you who are at those first two meetings, uh, bear with me. Um, hopefully it can reinforce some things that you may have taken away from those. But I did want to go through a couple of uh, the background for the project, um, and then as well share some information that we learned that you all provided us at the last meeting. So as I talked about, the county has been involved in this over a year now. Um, back in, in the beginning of 2014, after the decision was made by the previous administration to pursue the acquisition of, of the Long Reach Village Center to, to position it for redevelopment, the county council passed uh, urban renewal legislation. We were then en enabled to be able to purchase the property, which we did at the end of last year and then the beginning of this year. And right now we're in, we're in this third phase. We're in the property stabilization and the redevelopment planning. Once we get through that and we, we create and have approved by the county council an urban renewal plan, the county's intent is then to put out uh, via a request for pros proposal process uh, the sale of the property to a private sector developer that would follow the redevelopment guidelines set up in the urban renewal plan. Um, I wanted to just give you a quick overview so everybody understands the property that the county actually owns is this area in white here and it consists of the former Safeway space and the retail and office space as well as obviously the parking lot. 
the deli town, Richburn Liquors, the gas station, obviously the stone house where we are tonight, where we are tonight and Celebration Church's properties are obviously under separate ownership. We don't own those. In terms of our planning process, we have a number of inputs that will go, that, that county will consider as we develop an urban renewal plan. The first box obviously is what we're doing tonight. We're getting your input. We've got our design team, Morris Ritchie and Associates, who's been with us throughout this process um, that will provide the planning and design expertise to help us develop the guidelines that will be part of the urban renewal plan. We had an arts facility study done, and as those of you who were with us at our last meeting in County Executive, um, Kittleman referred to Duncan Webb, um, did that for the county at the end of last year. Um, we also have the village market studies, which we heard from Tom Moriarty in our first meeting. And finally, the Long Reach Village Board has created their own uh, master plan for the village center. So as far as the community engagement process goes, as I mentioned to you, we have four meetings planned. Um, our first and second meetings, we had the market and site analysis. We learned lessons from Wild Lake. Tonight, we're going to unveil some preliminary concept plans. Now, these are concept plans. We have four of them. They're just ideas. They're not set in stone. I want to set your expectation tonight. We're looking forward to your feedback to each of those concept plans, and we'll get into that in a little bit later on. Um, and then we're going to work for a couple of months on the urban renewal plan and finalizing those concept plans and we'll get back together in September. Um, we've learned through the years uh, in hosting these engagement meetings, it's really difficult to get this level of turnout during the summer months when everybody's on vacation and doing other things. So we're going to take that time to really hone in on some ideas and some issues and then get back together with you all in September. Um, in terms of the urban renewal plan, which will serve as the guidepost for redevelopment. The Department of Planning and Zoning will prepare that plan, and then that's going to be, um, and we'll probably have a few meetings um, to, to review the drafts of plans. Um, we'll then move to the County Council, which will consider the plan and have their normal legislative process, which will also have uh, particular points for testimony and written comment um, from, from the community. And then the council will then make any modifications and pass that plan. Once we do that, we'll then move to, uh, as I mentioned before, putting the property up for sale through a request for proposal process. Um, and we feel very strongly that when we've come in, we've stabilized the asset, we've created a plan that will then provide a developer with a way moving forward to reposition it, we're going to have a very good opportunity out there um, for the private sector to, to, to come in and, and actually effectuate and execute the, the redevelopment strategies. Um, I want to move on now to, to some of the things that we heard um, at our first meeting, and, and for those of you who weren't able to attend, we asked what were some of the uses that, that you would see, you would like to see in the, in the Long Reach Village Center. We got 360 responses, which was great. Um, we really appreciated all that feedback. And what we then did was to collapse those into some, some general categories. Um, as you can see there, and we've got these organized, and, and these presentations, by the way, will be put up on our website. So you can, you can actually have access to all the presentations. We're also filming this. I should have mentioned this. Um, we're filming this as we have done with our previous meetings. And you can actually watch um, if you missed um, those or want to look back at something that you may have heard. Um, but with respect to our first meeting, the feed, feedback that we got that, that you can see there, there was a high concentration in dining and food options, arts and culture, um, food at home, meaning um, grocery store, ethnic, st ethnic grocery store, convenience store, things that you could buy, food you could buy and bring home to eat, um, as well as health and fitness. Those were sort of the top four items. And we've taken that information, as you'll see later on tonight. Those are some, some strategic um, positionings that we've had for each of the plans that you'll be looking at, uh, the conceptual plans. Um, la at our last meeting, we we asked you a series of questions um, and wanted to get whether we had a rating system. Um, and for those of you who may remember who were at the meeting and those who weren't at the meeting, um, basically we asked how, whether on a scale of one to five, 
disagree or agree um, how you felt about each of those statements. And in the first, uh, the first question, it's there should be no housing in the Long Reach Village Center. 58% of the respondents, and we had about uh, 75 to 80 respondents in each of these questions, um, disagreed with that statement. So, um, and 30% agreed with that statement. So it appears that there's, there's at least some uh, uh, acceptance of the idea that in a mixed use framework, um, there, there could be some residential uses here in a, in a re reimagined Long Reach Village Center. Um, we then took a look at specific residential types. Um, and we offered a few examples here. Um, and the first example we asked about single family, 86%, and I know these numbers are probably hard for some of you to read, they're hard for me to read um, up here, and I have them right here, but 86% didn't support single family, and that makes sense. We really are looking, and I think the community is looking for a more dense uh, environment here in the village center, so single family doesn't make sense. Oops, it went too fast. Um, we also looked at townhomes, and townhomes, 62% um, didn't support townhomes. Um, as we moved on, though, to more dense uh, residential types of, of um, units, 34% did support apartments, but clearly, oops, I went the wrong way, thank you. There we go. Appreciate it. Thanks, Colleen. I looked at Colleen and she was doing this, like, no. I know you didn't agree with that, but the, um, so 34% agreed with um, there should be apartments as part of Long Reach Village Center, but clearly the, the real strong um, preference was for this mixed use type of example where it's residential with shops and retail along the first floor, and that, that came very, uh, through very clearly in the, the responses. I'm going to look to make sure. We also then talked about the target markets of potential residential. Um, and, and there's a whole range of different target markets that, that were considered. 59% um, agreed that artist housing, which is an interesting concept, and, and that's being done in a number of places throughout um, the state um, and nation, uh, thought that might be an int uh, agreed with that as a good option. 45% um, agreed with seniors uh, housing. When we looked at, at different, uh, some, more, some additional different types with respect to mixed income housing, 45% um, agreed that that, that would be a, a good use to, as a good option to have uh, here at Long Reach Village Center, as well as 45% agreed that just market rate housing would be a good option uh, at, at the Village Center. So a lot of different ideas out there. Um, but, but we felt like we got some real good feedback from you all and I really appreciated that. Lastly, we talked about the, the development form. How, and, and these are things that, that architects, when they get a piece of property and a client says, I want you to design something, they always talk about uses, they talk about density, and they talk about form. How do you want this laid out? Well, 60% disagreed that the standard typical retail pattern this one over here would be a, a, a good option for, uh, for Long Reach. 56%, however, f uh, felt that the Main Street retail pattern, this one in the middle, would be a good option. And 53% um, agreed with the, the statement that it sh uh, the Village Center should be oriented in a scaled down retail pattern. So between these two, pattern styles of development that, that seem to be uh, s s some, some consensus on those directions. Um, so that was great feedback. We really appreciated that. And what I'd like to do now is, is introduce Sean Davis. Sean, many of you have heard from our past sessions, is a principal with Morris Ritchie, and he's going to get to the good stuff. Uh, he's going to talk, run through some of these conceptual plans and then um, once we're finished with that, I'll come back up and we'll talk some more. Thank you. Okay, my head's gonna be in the way. Pardon me. 
move it over a little bit. Good evening. It's great to see everybody here again. This is, as we know, our third meeting, and it continually impresses me when I come out to see how many people are really engaged in this process. It's fantastic. As Mark said, we talked a lot about uses. Um, we, we kind of honed in on a series of three particular types of uses that we were focusing on. We talked a lot about form and some about density. And we understood uh, in our first meeting, we really kind of got our arms around the site, uh, understanding its you know, kind of opportunities and constraints from the, from the building side, from our neighbor's side, from the utility side, from a variety of things. So we really have kind of all the information necessary to, to begin to develop concepts. And I just want to... Go back and make sure, yes. So if we talk about um, rescaping the whole environment, support uh, multi-use multi things or apartments, and reach out, wouldn't that cost a lot of money? Okay. I'm assuming it would, and I don't think that that ballpark figures of how much money we're talking about to re reshape all the land it hasn't been discussed. So when you say that we've got everything that we need, I think we missed a few parts. Okay, we're not done yet, and if I can, if any, if, if we have questions, if we can hold those to the end, I thought you were going to say, I'm, no, 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 no. I, just, I thought we were missing something. No, I, I appreciate it, and we'll come back to that when we get to the Q&A. Um, but what I want to do is I want to go through the concepts with everybody. And to start off with, I want to make sure that we all start with the same kind of base framework. When we looked at the alternatives, the four alternatives that we're going to show you tonight, it was very important for us to make sure that we maintained the existing uses on the site that are privately owned. Delhi Town, Richburn Liquors, the gas station, obviously Stonehouse and the Arts Center. So we have not shown including those, okay? That's very, very important. We, we want to make sure that we develop plans on just the property that's owned currently by the county, okay? What we did was we developed four different alternatives Two of them are focused on art, one is focused on food, and the last is focused on health and fitness. When we look at the redevelopment scope, how intense it may be or uh, whatnot, the, the first concept we're going to show on the art is very low. It's a very low in, uh, uh, intercession, very low scope of uh, you know, redevelopment, if you will. To the second art concept, which really is very high, is a, as you'll see, there's a, there's a variety of things that we're doing with that one. On the food, we have a moderate uh, scope, and on the, on the health and fitness, it's again a very high intense, uh, intensity of, in terms of the redevelopment. We show two concepts that do not have any housing, and two concepts that have housing. Now that's not to say that the concepts that don't have housing couldn't, they could, and the concepts that do show housing don't necessarily have to. So there's a lot of flexibility in all of these. So the first concept that, we, that we're going to talk about is again, it's focused on arts, and what we've basically limited this to is fundamentally tearing down, removing the existing retail building that is here, that backs out onto the parking lot, and then backfill that space with really outdoor uh, opportunities for art, uh, for gathering, for a variety of different th reasons. But then that opens up the retail, the existing retail uh, that's back kind of hidden from the parking lot now. In this particular concept, we're showing that the second floor office would remain as is, that we would potentially clad the front and actually the side here on the first floor. As you know, when you walk up to the center from the parking lot, the existing uh, front door for the, the uh, grocer and the side of the grocer, they're blank walls. They're not very inviting. What we could do is we could remove those walls and we could put glass, and we could put galleries, and we could put a variety of different uses in there to really kind of activate this space here and this space here. So the, we're really re talking about repurposing most buildings and just removing that front retail. We're talking about, obviously, the renovation uh, of the retail and office space to, to bring them up to kind of current market standards uh, for the industry. We're talking about creating a very, very active open space with an amenity focal point uh, in the center of it. That could be what we have today, or we could re repurpose the entire plaza, uh, if you will. And we're talking about retrofitting this f really for the arts. So for example, we're taking, talking about taking the existing grocer and saying, 
we can have kind of the galleries and shops that can play off the arts center here and play off galleries, additional galleries and shops here. These could be very, very different. These could be more artist studios where they're very, very active and interactive with the, uh, you are, could become interactive with the, the artists. Where these may be traditional sh shops and galleries focused on art. But then taking the remaining portion of the, the um, shop of the grocery store and converting that into a variety of different potential performing arts facilities. Things such as the black box, uh, stage, a variety of different things. We'd obviously have to f deal with the internal structural elements of the building because there's columns and a variety of other things and we, can, we, can, we believe we can successfully do that. So this focus is really on very, very minimal uh, intervention. Just basically fundamentally taking this and repurposing everything else, okay? The next art concept is a, is a little bit more intense where we're basically, again, we're keeping our neighbors, deli, liquor, uh, and the gas station. And here, we're really kind of focusing more on the Main Street concept, the town center concept, with ground level retail and upper level residential, kind of focusing this Main Street right on this focal point, right on uh, the architectural element of the, uh, of the arts center today, you know, the, the large glass pane that really becomes the iconic element of that, of that uh, building. Focusing Main Street right on that, and now activating a really strong streetscape here and here, and providing you know relatively uh, minimal parking that can service uh, the the ground level retail, and then this building right here would, again we're showing ground level retail along the main street, but then residential above, which would be serviced by a parking garage for the residential off of um, Cloud Leap Way, or excuse me, Cloud Leap, and then this would have a. You know, it, it would actually be what we call a podium building. So the first floor is, um, is basically at grade, and then there's a concrete plinth, and then there's residential that's built above that. So this amenity, this interior amenity here, is actually elevated above the ground, accessible to the residents above. They look out on it. So if, I'm, if, I, fo if I live here, I'm focusing on Main Street. If I live on this side, I'm focusing on the amenity space here. We're talking about building a new arts facility here that would really kind of anchor this side of Main Street. Uh, and we're also talking about a road connection back out to Foreland Garth here. So providing another connection uh, back out to, so that people, when they come down, it doesn't, Main Street doesn't dead end. It really kind of continues and really opens up another great opportunity for amenity space and a, a amenity focal point at the front of uh, the Arts Center. So again, we're talking residential over retail, strong views on the existing arts center, new creative arts building, very similar to what we talked about in the first concept, but in a new building. The main street access and the, and the uh, road uh, and the frontage that fronts onto the arts center would be smaller, more uh, intimate gallery, more interactive uh, arts opportunities uh, while we were talking about the opposite side of the road being more, maybe more of your traditional gallery space. And then the, art, the creative arts building here would, have, would house the performing arts and a variety of other things. But this would be a new building, really kind of creating a nice architectural edge. The other thing that we've done with this is we've pulled the architecture out to Tamar. One of the things we, we, we all talked about in the uh, site analysis is that it's pulled so, back, so far back off Tamar, it really doesn't have a presence along Tamar. We want, as much as we can pull it up to Tamar would be great to provide a stronger uh, presence along that road and a stronger architectural edge. But it's important to note one of the things we did look into, one of the things we've talked about, is is there an opportunity for this main street to really kind of come out and directly connect to Tamar? Because right now, as we all know, you come in off Cloud Leap and you come in off Foreland and Garth and you're not coming into the center directly. Unfortunately, what we have found in talking with traffic engineering is we cannot have another curb cut on Tamar between these two intersections. There's not enough intersection spacing to allow for an additional access point, especially considering the fact that there is an existing access point across the way, so you would have a four-way, it would become potentially a dangerous uh, situation, okay? So we were unable to do that, but I think we created a, you know, an interesting concept here when we're talking about maintaining all of these uh, existing, uh, existing uses. The next concept focuses on food, and what we're really talking about here is removing the front retail building over here, pulling the existing access point a little bit closer to this building, having ground level retail and upper level shops, 
That may be the existing building, or it may be a new building, depending upon what makes sense from the retailer standpoint and the office above. Because that office technically could be multi-story office if there's a market for it. And the existing office is there does not use, as you all know, does not use the entire footprint of that building. It's only a part of it. So somebody may come in, they may look at it and they may say, you know what, we're going to tear that building down. We're going to build a new building that's going to have right floor to uh, ceiling heights, it's going to have new office above and a variety of other things. But generally, it's in the same location. One of the other elements about this plan is we've basically we've shown a very strong connection from the front to the back parking lot, so for both vehicular and pedestrian accessibility, and we've really provided a tremendous amount of amenity space for farmers markets, for um, a lot of uh, kind of activity space that can happen uh, throughout the weekends. Here we're talking about a small format food anchor. This is about a 20, 22,000 square foot anchor. We're talking about restaurants, maybe a farm to table restaurant. Uh, so we, there's a variety of things that we can play off of on that food side, okay? Um, there's also, as we said, ground level retail here. So we can really bring into, uh, bring into the picture a number of different food opportunities from the organic side and you know, the, the preparation side and a variety of other things. Um, the program, that, as we said, the open space really is now, I think, there's a much stronger connection from celebration back into this center. Um, we've had, we now have, you know, kind of adequate loading and, and uh, space back here. Um, and the connectivity is really kind of an important, a really important element. We're also showing in this particular concept, one of the things that we talked about is how we get pedestrians that currently use you know, they cross over, and we, you know, we, as we pointed out in, that first, uh, in our first meeting, there is that cow path. You all know where it is. You kind of cross over the street, and it comes down to the, the gas station to really kind of embrace those and make those uh, real, true pedestrian connections. So we would connect back down to the gas station, but we can also connect here through and back out to this amenity space with, again, the amenity focal point. Oh, sorry. And then the final concept focuses on, on health and fitness. And this concept does include residential. Um, what we're talking about here is basically tearing down uh, this entire retail section and office section over here, removing the existing grocery store uh, over here, creating two L-shaped buildings that kind of open up and focus. Every one of the concepts that we've presented focuses heavily on the Arts Center. It really kind of opens up, ideally it opens up that view uh, to the back of this building, which is a really, you know, a very special element here in Long Reach that we really wanted to embrace. So in this particular concept, we're really, really opening it up. And we're providing a very, very large space out in front that can be used for Pilates classes, that could, yoga, it could be a variety of different things that could happen out here throughout the weekend, uh, or throughout the week. And we're talking here in, in terms of the, focusing on the health and, and fitness, that that could be potential uh, doctor's office, it could be you know, the traditional health and fitness uh, facilities, but taking that back and really kind of opening this up. On the opposite side, what we're talking about is some ground level retail here um, that would really kind of focus on the parking here and this drop off in this amenity space, and then having senior housing above. And here again, what we're really talking about is a, a garage that could service those, those uses. Um, in this particular concept, we're, you know, maybe 100 to 150 uh, multifamily homes, multifamily units could be located in this form, okay? The last thing that we've done is we've introduced the opportunity for a pharmacy, again, going along with the health and fitness um, uh, approach for this and providing some architectural element back up at the intersection of Tamar and Cloud Leap. Uh, we think that that could be a very strong element and help really support uh, the health fitness uh, kind of approach to this. So in all four concepts, we think they're, they're different. They include different uses. They have different focuses. And we look forward to talking with you about it further. Thank you, Sean. I think there's, these are a lot of really interesting concepts. And I want to make sure that everybody understands that these are simply concepts. Um, we've, we've got some ideas down on paper and what we're really looking toward 
for you all now is to give us some feedback on that. And we felt that the most effective way for us to do that is to continue our, our tradition here in our meetings of roundtable exercises. What we've got is each of those four plans are at our round, one of these one, two, three round tables. We're going to um, ask you all to just pick a table you want to go to and provide feedback. We've got markers there if you want to draw on some of the plans or have ideas, but give you a chance to really uh, dig into that and understand that. We'll also have these plans up on our website um, so you can look at them and, and again give us, give us more feedback from there. Um, what we would like to do to make sure that we kind of uh, keep, the, keep, keep people moving through the plans is I'm going to every, about every 10 minutes or so I'll come up and uh, we'll come up with some way to, to ask you to, to move on to another plan. But um, this way I think we can get some good feedback from you and have, have you get a chance to, to look more closely at these plans. So we'll go ahead and start and then um, if there's any questions I can, I can take them to the side. Okay, thank you all. We have hosting ArtReach here. Please come. It's going to be a great event. We've got flyers back at the back table. Um, and so it's June 20th, 11 to 4. There'll be some fantastic things to, to come and see. Um, secondly, on the back of your agendas are coupons. If you really support Longreach Village Center, Please put your money where your mouth is. Shop here. And we're making it a little easier for you to shop here. These are 15% off. You got four of them. They're good for the next month. Come and patronize our merchants. That's what we really need your help with in the next month. So get out there and do it. We'll be back here on September 17th. Um, our website, howardcountymd.gov. Ron, right there backslash Longreach. We're using this as our main mode of communications. If you want to email us, Raj Kuchatkar, standing over here with that cool purple tie, you can send an email to Raj or go up and say hi to him. You'll give him a, he'll give you his card. Um, we really appreciate all your input and very excited about continuing this journey with us to reimagine Longreach Village Center. Thanks very much. Stay here as long as you want and enjoy the plans. Appreciate it.